much for having me here to speak with you today. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, wonderful. So um, I am not a scientist such as the others that spoke with you, but I am, um, I was uh, a victim of tick bites and had Lyme, Babesia, and I did have anaplasma. So um, my, my talk is based on advocating for what we need to do. Um, and first of all, the most important thing I want you to take away that nobody's talked about is how you can best protect yourself. Um, with so many pathogens out here, we need, we need this. Also, that the source of this disease is in nature. It's in, as you saw with Dr. Osfeld and, and, um, and uh, Mr. Evans, uh, excuse me, Rotan's <laughs> um, talk that, um, you know, it's the small mammals and the deer and everything else. And I can tell you that science has gotten a pittance of funding. We, they need it. They're the only ones who can stop this scourge of disease, and they will not stop until they get funding to do this. And lastly, there are loads of us now. We're powerful. We have to tell our legislators, our federal and state legislators, what we want them to do about this. So we must work together with nature, which is so out of bounds, to find solutions to tick-borne diseases that aren't harmful to us nor the earth we live on. of where we've been over the past 35 years. Patients suffer with no test to determine after disease, while ticks and disease increase, spread, and infect us. The scourge of disease will continue to increase unless the source of disease is addressed. These are the issues I'm going to address, the environment, solutions, protection, and how you can help. I'm going to skip this because Dr. Hostel already spoke about that. And I'm going to go over this much more briefly than I would have. So, whoops, here, here are the ticks mating. Their favorite host is the deer. These are all, each one of these ticks will mate and um, feed on the deer and then fall off into the leaf litter or the brush and lay their two to 3,000 eggs. The, the mouse infects the, um, the larvae that hatch. And then when that's, that's a nymph, it then will infect us or other animals. And then it needs its third blood meal as an adult, and here we are back at the deer. So you can see we have an increasing cycle of more ticks and more disease. And I hope these animal pictures will gross you out. And for example, the moose populations have been devastated by ticks. So um, surprisingly, nobody spoke about the lovely mouth parts, at least I don't think so, but uh, this is the hypostome, which is kind of barbed like a fish hook, so it isn't easily removed. Um, and that's where the tick kind of cements itself in. Um, this is the adult stage, the, 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 the um, eggs, the larvae, a nymph and the adults, male and female. But there's been a prom uh, prom problem. The most promising field of science needs funding to bring solutions to fruition. The anti-tick research that would have stopped disease pulled in its tracks by preventing ticks from remaining attached, thus their ability to transmit pathogens, isn't funded anymore. <coughs> tick reduction. There's risk-reward in everything. So here's a picture of um, ticks for books. Sorry about that. Here's a picture of tick spraying. Um, it's the only cost-effective item now allowed. It's proven to dramatically kill ticks and has a low risk level. The active ingredient in it is in shampoo used for lice in hair. Um, it is con very controlled at about a three foot height. Permethrin based chemical, spring and fall spraying on the perimeter, 
dissipates in about two weeks. It's water insoluble when it dries, so it doesn't leach into the groundwater or run out <coughs> once it's dry, but it is certainly not safe for aquatic life. An organic fertilizer developed by farm in Delaware County needs verification that it kills ticks. My friend's dog has had no ticks for two years in his fenced closed yard since he's been using that. And he's always had dogs and always had fenced and closed yards, but that made a difference. So um, this would be the cat's meow for community residents by making our yards and neighborhoods safe and reducing ticks at a low cost, especially if you're already using a fertilizer. Um, spread it on your lawn and while I green grass and no more ticks. But um, we really need science to prove that this works. Fungus. This is a natural fungus that occurs in nature, in nature, in the soil. Um, and what we don't know right now, the CDC is researching this, but we don't know how effective it is and how much that would cost us. And of course, cost is a big concern for all of us today. The mouse bait box. This is wonderful because it really tackles the disease at the source, the chipmunks and the mice. And um, the only problem with it is that it is costly. So um, Daminex tubes, is on, um, the mouse takes these little different base of uh, laced cotton balls back to their nest and it kills the ticks. Um, there's been mixed results with the testing. The CDC is currently testing it right now. Okay, two other things that I don't have pictured here. One is an oral vape vaccine for the mice. It's called Lime Shield by U.S. Biologics, and I'm sure you're going to be seeing a lot of, about that. Um, it is, their, their idea is that this product can not only be used on lawns, but also in parklands and such. And we have um, precedence with a, with a rabies vaccine that together with vaccinating our animals, had in, I believe, 2012, brought the case of rabies in the U.S. down to one case um, in the U.S. So, um, and they're also thinking about once they get this product uh, uh, underway, that they will add other pathogens. So we have to tackle this in nature. So that's, that's a way of doing that. And it's much more effective, much less costly than vaccinating people. Um, vaccinating us, we're the, end of the, we're the end of the cycle, won't do anything to reduce disease. Um, Nucatone, it's an environmentally friendly natural insecticide. It's non-toxic, in fact, it's food grade. Uh, it's essential oil that does not persist in the environment. It's being tested by the CDC. I hope it doesn't end up being too costly, but they're talking about uh, using it in shampoos and, and uh, soaps for us, so after we come in with the wash off. But it would be great if we could use that in the environment because it really is a safe way to kill the ticks. So this is just a summary of what, what we've just talked about. And ticks are a public health threat. I really need you to come up here so I can demonstrate. It's really important to know about ticks' habits. They don't jump, they don't drop, drop from trees or fly. They're on the ground or crawl upwards to on brush up to about a three foot height with their legs outstretched, waiting to man an animal that's walking by for its blood meal. Ticks die if they dry out, and that's really important to remember. They have, as was said before, three blood meals in their life. Don't be one of them. The only thing we have in our bag of tricks is protection. Spray permethrin on your clothing, shoes, and socks. It lasts through washing and then kills ticks for purchase impregnated clothing and always read directions. Dress properly, wear light colors, tuck your pants into your socks, stay into the middle of, of paths to avoid brush where ticks wait to nap them. Use deep or other products on your skin. So I'm going to show my husband is a model here, and he's got these wonderful gators that are permanently laced with um, with the methrin in them. And you can even just keep them in your car so that if you, you know, ended up being in a place that you should have been, you can put those on. Um, we always spray, you have to spray your shoes and socks. It takes crawl upwards, so it's really important. The most uh, success you have with this is spraying your shoes, your socks, and your pants up to about a mid-height level at least. Um, but then if you're gardening, you know, you're going to be bending over, 
you need to cover your hair and everything else. But we actually this year purchased clothing that's impregnated with um, permethrin, um, and it lasts for the life of the clothing. So it's very, and there's some information in the back. Um, um, so I told you that ticks can't stand to have their bodies dried out. So if you found yourself in a really kind of situation that you should have been in, what I do, and my grandson really laughed when I told him this, go into your house, walk over to the dryer, strip all of your clothes off, and throw them in on a high heat, 15 to 20 minutes to control the ticks. Go upstairs and shower yourself well. Tick checks. It normally takes more than 24 hours, but the sooner that you get a tick off of your body, the best chance you have of not having disease transmitted. Tick checks are really, really important every single night. Um, also, um, check your pets and keep them off the bed and furniture because if a tick has an attachment to them and they're roaming around, they could fall off and be looking through their blood meal and it could be you. As far as protecting your tick, your, uh, your pets, ask your veterinarian. And be careful because more than one product can be really toxic to them. As far as landscape management, again, because ticks um, die if they dry out, keep your play yards in sunshine, keep your grass short, clear your leaf litter. You and your neighbors must protect each other because just doing something on your own yard does not work. Ticks, mice, deer, children, pets don't know where property lines are. So we have to help each other. It's got to be a community effort. So um, here are some websites um, that I find are very good. And Dr. Osfeld, if you have a, a website soon or similar that would help people, but this um, tickencounter.org prevention, and then our own stock ticks that we, we put together through our task force here, um, has lots of information on prevention, but very, um, you know, in a very helpful, easy way. And then um, we also have a calendar with the support groups in the entire area and many events. Okay, notice there's more Lyme disease than there is the flu. And notice the funding is the lowest. And literally, none of this is for research. We need to protect us from the source of disease. Andrew explained the CDC surveillance case definition. These numbers would not include people who fall outside of the surveillance case definition but do have Lyme disease. But considering the factor of 10, New York State had over a million um, people between 1990 and 2012. The CDC says 10 to 20% are left with lingering symptoms. Other sources say up to 50. <clears throat> so are they just lingering symptoms or are they treatment failures? There's a huge number of people remaining symptomatic. Does it matter what you call it? I don't think so. People are still ill. Dr. Oswell already spoke about the high level of infection rates with the ticks locally in the, nymph in the nymphal ticks. Um, how many <clears throat> may be due to co-infections or other tick-borne pathogens? How many people are left with lingering symptoms? What does it cost us, families, healthcare, and public disability systems? Um, this, this does prove that tick research is very cost effective. Chronic illness is a huge burden to society. And as you will see, this survey demonstrates that Lyme disease patients are included as chronically ill. People and animals suffer while science and government and doctors debate. It's important to understand the Lyme wars. It's really complicated, but I'm gonna make it as easy as possible. It's kind of the simple versus the complex. Simple to follow Infectious Disease Society of America guidelines. It's simple to diagnose, even though there's no test to determine active dis infection. Easy to treat with two to four weeks of a cookbook approach, one fits all, cured by definition whether you have ongoing symptoms or not. 
If it were so simple, would 17-year-old Joseph have died of undiagnosed, untreated, disseminated Lyme last summer after a month of illness? Those who say it's complex say tick-borne disease is complicated, and it's not just Lyme disease. If patients aren't well after four weeks, treatment may be continued on an individual basis. Physicians have called me complaining they can't treat their sick patients due to fear of state licensing medical board. The New York State is called the OPMC, Office of Professional Medical Conduct. And insurance companies rely on the simpler Infectious Disease Society of America approach for treatment. Dicks don't discriminate. These are some pictures of our magnificent but treacherously tick-infected Hudson Valley. It could be you or your loved one next. Will your family escape unscathed? The walkway over the Hudson, our newest park, is probably only the tick the only tick-free zone we have for the park. So Children ages five through nine, as you saw before, are most at risk. Um, when I was a child, just like Andrew, I used to roll in the grass, jump in the leaves, play in the woods. I love the outdoors. Children can't do that today. They shouldn't get sick by merely going outside to play. And it's almost impossible to totally avoid ticks. Exposure to ticks must be reduced or the scourge of disease will continue to increase. So stop the tick, stop disease. It's up to you to speak up. Contact your federal, state, and local representatives. They want to be reelected, and they'll pay attention when they start hearing from you, and you, and you, and you. We need to elect representatives who care about us. Tell them you want tick reduction research now. It's way past time for it. This is where you can be powerful and take control so we can all enjoy our environment. Also, there's a bill in Albany now to assure that patients will have access to physicians who are able to treat those that are still sick beyond a simple IDSA approach. Options that can mean the difference between a healthy life and one of chronic pain and progressive disability. And um, if you take a look at me, I don't think I, I have long-term late-stage Lyme disease and Lyme mist. Four weeks, I'm telling you, have done nothing for me. So the bill um, in the assembly has passed unanimously already, and um, this is the bill number in the Senate. Your assistance is critically needed um, to help with this by letting the legislators you know that, that you want your options left open if you haven't been, been cured by more weeks of antibiotic treatment. Um, you shouldn't be thrown in the trash. Anyway, thank you very much.